Triste is a Swiss-designed, Italian-built deep-diving research bath Iscafi, which with her crew of two reached a record maximum depth of about 10,911 meters, in the deepest known part of the Earth's oceans, the Challenger Deep, in the Mariana Trench near Guam in the Pacific. On January 23, 1960, Jacques Picard and U.S. Navy Lieutenant Don Walsh achieved the goal of Project Necton. Treese was the first man vessel to have reached the bottom of the Challenger Deep. Design Treese consisted of a float chamber filled with gasoline for buoyancy, with a separate pressure sphere to hold the crew. This configuration, allowed for a free dive, rather than the previous bathysphere designs in which a sphere was lowered to depth and raised again to the surface by a cable attached to a ship. Triest was designed by the Swiss scientist Auguste Picard and originally built in Italy. His pressure sphere, composed of two sections, was built by the company Aixiala Returni. The upper part was manufactured by the company Cantieri Riunity dello Adriatico, in the free territory of Triest. Hence the name chosen for the Bath Iscafi. The installation of the pressure sphere was done in the Cantier Navale di Castellamare di Stabia, near Naples. Triest was launched on August 26, 1953 into the Mediterranean Sea near the Isle of Capri. The design was based on previous experience with the Bath Iscafi FNRS-2. Triest was operated by the French Navy. After several years of operation in the Mediterranean Sea, the Triest was purchased by the United States Navy in 1958 for $250,000. At the time of Project Necton, the Triest was more than 15 meters long. The majority of this was a series of floats filled with 85,000 liters of gasoline, and water ballast tanks were included at either end of the vessel, as well as releasable iron ballast in two conical hoppers along the bottom, fore and aft of the crew sphere. The crew occupied the 2.16 m pressure sphere, attached to the underside of the float and accessed from the deck of the vessel by a vertical shaft that penetrated the float and continued down to the sphere hatch. The pressure sphere provided just enough room for two people. It provided completely independent life support, with a closed circuit rebreather system similar to that used in modern spacecraft and spacesuits. Oxygen was provided from pressure cylinders, and carbon dioxide was scrubbed from breathing air by being passed through canisters of soda lime. Power was provided by batteries. The Triest was subsequently fitted with a new pressure sphere manufactured by the Krupp Steel Works of Essen, Germany, in three finely machined sections. To withstand the enormous pressure of 1.25 metric tons per kmar squared at the bottom of Challenger Deep, the sphere's walls were 12.7 centimeters thick. The sphere weighed 14.25 metric tons in air and 8 metric tons in water equals 2.6 times that of sea water. The float was necessary because of the sphere's density, it was not possible to design a sphere large enough to hold a person that could withstand the necessary pressures, yet also have metal walls thin enough for the sphere to be neutrally buoyant. Gasoline was chosen as the float fluid because it is less dense than water, incompressible even at extreme pressure, thus retaining its buoyant properties and negating the need for thick, heavy walls for the float chamber. Observation of the sea outside the craft was conducted directly by eye, via a single, very tapered, cone-shaped block of acrylic glass, the only transparent substance identified which would withstand the external pressure. Outside illumination for the craft was provided by quartz arc light bulbs, which proved to be able to withstand the over 1,000 standard atmospheres of pressure without any modification. Nine metric tons of magnetic iron pellets were placed on the craft as ballast, both to speed the descent and allow ascent, since the extreme water pressures would not have permitted compressed air ballast expulsion tanks to be used at great depths. This additional weight was held in place at the throats of two hopper-like ballast silos by electromagnets, so in case of an electrical failure the bathyscaphy would automatically rise to the surface. Transported to the Naval Electronics Laboratories facility in San Diego, California, Triest was modified extensively by the Americans, and then used in a series of deep submergence tests in the Pacific Ocean during the next few years, culminating in the dive to the bottom of the Challenger Deep during January 1960. The Mariana Trench Dives 
Patrice departed San Diego on October 5, 1959 for Guam aboard the freighter Santa Maria to participate in Project Necton, a series of very deep dives in the Mariana Trench. On January 23, 1960, she reached the ocean floor in the Challenger Deep, carrying Jack Picard and Don Walsh. This was the first time a vessel, manned or unmanned, had reached the deepest known point of the Earth's oceans. The board systems indicated a depth of 11,521 meters, although this was revised later to 10,916 meters. Fairly recently, more accurate measurements have found Challenger Deep to be between 10,911 meters and 10,994 meters deep. The descent to the ocean floor took 4 hours 47 minutes at a descent rate of 0.9 meters per second. After passing 9000 m one of the outer plex cycler's window panes cracked, shaking the entire vessel. The two men spent barely 20 minutes on the ocean floor, eating chocolate bars for sustenance. The temperature in the cabin was 7 a degree Celsius at the time. While at maximum depth, Picard and Walsh unexpectedly regained the ability to communicate with the support ship, USS Wandank using a sonar hydrophone voice communications system. At a speed of almost 1.6 km per second a euro about five times the speed of sound in air a euro it took about seven seconds for a voice message to travel from the craft to the support ship and another seven seconds for answers to return. While at the bottom, Picard and Walsh observed a number of small sole and flounder. Their claim the fish were swimming would prove at least some vertebrate life can withstand the extreme pressure at the ocean's deepest point. They noted that the floor of the Challenger Deep consisted of diatomaceous ooze. The ascent took 3 hours and 15 minutes. Other deep dives by Trieste, beginning in April 1963, Trieste was modified and used in the Atlantic Ocean to search for the missing submarine USS Thresher. Trieste was delivered to Boston Harbor by USS Point Defiance under the command of Captain H. H. Hazen. In August 1963, Trieste found the wreck off the coast of New England, 2,600 m below the surface. Trieste was changed, improved and redesigned so many times that almost no original parts remain. She was transported to the Washington Navy Yard where she was exhibited along with the Krupp Pressure Sphere in the National Museum of the U.S. Navy at the Washington Navy Yard in 1980. Her original Turney Pressure Sphere was incorporated into the Trieste II. In art and literature, the book Ten Miles High, Two Miles Deep documents Picard's research on the stratosphere, as well as his work with the Trieste, especially the design and construction. The song The Trench by Danish composer Ste van Home is a tribute to the Mariana Trench dives. Voyage of the Trieste, an instrumental track on the Chocolate Watch Band's 1968 LP The Inner Mystique. The Trieste figures prominently in the 2008 novel The Extraordinary Event of PLH by Canadian writer Nicola Vulp. The producers of the TV show Star Trek, the next generation named the ship's captain Jean-Luc Picard after Jacques Picard. They would later name one of the show's starships the USS Trieste, after the Bathyscaphy. Gaffey. She was noted for being small and slow. The Trieste appears in the 2008 novel Flood by Stephen Baxter. See also, Deep Submergence Rescue Vehicle, Deep Submergence Vehicle, Alvin, Project Mowell, Mir. References Further reading, Picard, Jacques and Diets, Robert S. Seven Miles Down. The Story of the Bathyscaf Trees G. T. Putnam Sons. External links The Bathyscaf Trees celebrates the 50th anniversary of the world's deepest dive. Dives of the Bathyscaf Trees, Dictabelt Recordings, 50th Anniversary Recollection by Retired Navy Captain Don Walsh. 2008 Obituary of Diver Jack Pickard.